Hey, what do you think of my pants? The best part, it has pockets! Who doesn't love matching family Christmas pajamas? But what I don't love is how expensive they are. Also, if you're buying for more than two people, it can be almost impossible to find the right size. They're all actually matching. This video is going to show you how to make flannel or fleece pajama pants with pockets. And you don't need an expensive pattern and you don't need to sacrifice a pair of your already existing pants to the sewing gods. Hi, I'm Nikita and welcome to my channel where this is what I do. I drink and I sew things. an Otis oatmeal stout from Ninkasi Brewing, which is in Eugene, Oregon. I'm gonna put it in a mug because I feel extra fancy today. I just love watching it do that thing. I am an aggressive pourer, okay? This is a great beer if you love the taste of like chocolatey oatmeal stouts and you want the experience of drinking a loaf of bread. Some tutorials will tell you that you can just fold a pair of existing pants in half, trace around it, and then you're good to go. The problem with that is that the back piece is actually larger than the front piece because it has to accommodate, well, your butt. So unless you have absolutely zero butt, that's not really going to work. Other tutorials will tell you to cut up a pair of pajama pants and then trace those pieces. but. What if you don't want to cut up your pajama pants? But not this tutorial. You can keep all of your pants intact and we'll even add pockets. Grab yourself a pair of your most comfortable pajamas, pour yourself a drink, and let's do this. Gosh, everything is better with beer. You're going to need pajama pants that fit whoever you are making these for. Pins, you are gonna have to use pins and not just fabric clips. A rotary cutter or fabric scissors a pin or fabric marker, elastic. I'm using three quarter inch only because they were sold out of the one inch elastic. So I'll give you measurements both for three quarter inch and one inch. And two safety pins for the elastic and some fleece or flannel fabric. A quick note about the fabric that you choose to use. If you are making these for children's pajamas, there are regulations in the United States, I'm not sure about anywhere else, about what kinds of fabric that you can use for making pajamas if they're not tight fitting to the body. So they have to be like flame retardant, I think. Um, so you'll see that on this, on the selvage edge here of um, my Joann's, it says not intended for children's sleepwear. And it's for that reason, because this fabric is not flame retardant. So if you are going to make pajamas for your kids out of flannel fabric that has this warning or out of fleece fabric that'll probably say the same thing. Make them at your own risk. Ooh. Now this is the fabric I'm going to be using, but I'm going to be tracing a pattern because I'm going to be making multiple pairs of this pair of pajamas. So if you are making multiple pairs or if you would like to make another pair later, then I would recommend not tracing it directly on the fabric, but making a pattern for yourself instead, which is what I'm going to do right now. All right, now first things first, we can't let that beer get warm. So cheers, my friend. Now I'm ready to go. This is the front of my pajamas. So we're going to start with the front here. Okay, front facing up. Now fold your pants in half so that the front side is together. When you're making these from an existing pair of pajamas, you wanna make sure that the seams are lined up. I don't want this seam under here. See how far underneath it was tucked? I don't want it to be tucked underneath because I'm going to be tracing it. So I'm going to fold out my pants so that the seam is flat. I don't care so much if the leg underneath is kind of wrinkly or whatever. I just wanna make sure that it's if it's not matched up to my top leg that it's out of the way so that it doesn't screw up my measurements. So I'm going to fold this out, flatten it, line up the elastic at the top. Now this part is going to be really super important. So you want to make sure that the crotch seam gets pulled out. So you want to find where there's like an intersection right here. Okay. And that intersection is where the front and the back get sewn together. So we're going to pull that out. And as I kind of pull it out, I'm going to straighten my seam. So do you see how kind of weird that looks? 
That's because the seat needs to be large enough to accommodate your seat. So that is normal. If you're not making a pattern, you're gonna do this, but you're going to pin it onto your fabric instead of onto the paper. Now I'm gonna take my quilting ruler. You can use a measuring tape. You can use whatever you want. And we are going to trace around the outside, but we're going to be adding a half inch around all of these seams here because that is going to be our seam allowance. These pants are already sewed, so we have to add the seam allowance back in when we're creating a pattern from already put together pants. Here's the thing about the elastic. It, the waistband is already scrunched up and we want to make our pattern or cut out our piece where it's not scrunched up so it has the room to do that. See the side where it's not folded? I'm going to hold my hand here and I'm actually gonna mark the edge of it just so that I know where that is. Then I'm going to take my other hand and I'm gonna pull it out. Holding my hand here, I'm gonna pull it out as straight as I can and I'm gonna mark where it stops. And these two marks are where I'm gonna measure the half inch from so that my piece will be the right size. I know I've talked about this quilting ruler before. I really love it because there's a little half inch right here. So this line shows me this is a half inch. So I can just line up that line to the edge of my pants. Now the next part we're gonna do is the hem. Instead of adding a half inch here, we're gonna add one inch because we're gonna tuck it under a half inch, then tuck it under a half inch again. So an inch in total. I'm also gonna mark where the elastic start is on each side. Now that's gonna be very important for the next part. If you are going to be using one inch elastic, you are going to measure three inches from the start of that line to the top and that is where your pants are going to stop. If you are using three quarter inch elastic like I am, you are gonna measure two and a half inches from this line and that is where your pants are gonna stop. So I'm gonna measure two and a half from each side or maybe you're measuring three. Now that the back side of my pants are made, I am going to cut out my pattern. If you would like to know exactly how much fabric that you need to buy, measure from the top of the waist here on the out seam, which is the straight side, and to the bottom here, and double that. And that is how much fabric that you will need. Let's uh, take a drink before we do the front. So remember, this was the back side of our pants with this big swoop here. Now we're going to take the pants and unfold them. And then we're gonna fold them in half the other direction. So now instead of the front sides touching, now the back sides will be touching. And you're gonna do the same thing where you kind of pull out the seams and make sure they're not folded under. Make sure, remember the intersection. I'm gonna pull it and flatten it. Now it looks like this. So it should look different than the back side. Maybe only slightly, but it should be different. So if yours looks different, you're doing it right. If you're doing kids PJs, the process is basically the same, just in a much smaller scale. It's much less important that you get a front and a back. The front and the back may actually look exactly the same anyway. We're gonna layer out a fabric and drink our beer. When dealing with flannel fabric, you want to make sure that your flannel is pre-washed and dried because otherwise it can shrink, it might fray, so you want to make sure that it is washed and dried. This is called the Selvage Edge, so you see how it has my Joann's label here. When they give this to you in the fabric store, generally this is how it comes off of the bolt, so it's already folded like this, but I don't want it um, right sides out, I want it right sides together. After your fabrics are right sides together, you're going to take one of your pattern pieces or take your pajama pants folded one direction if you're not making a pattern. And you're going to place it onto your fabric. I like to try to make sure that it's as close to one of the sides as I can get it. So I'm going to place it on this side. The reason I like to do that is because we're going to need to cut out pocket pieces out of the same material. And so by doing this, I can leave lots of space here for cutting out those pieces. Once you've got your pattern on here, we're actually gonna pin the paper to our fabric. And we'll do 
one more for good measure. You don't need a ton of pins, just enough to keep your pattern in place while you cut. I'm just gonna use my rotary cutter and I'm gonna cut around the outside. You can also use your fabric scissors to do this. Another option is to trace it and then to cut it. But why do that? Woo! Remember to save this extra bit so we can cut the pockets later. Now go ahead and unpin your pattern piece. All right, before I cut the back side, I am actually going to mark on my pattern and on my fabric the start and stop points for my pockets. I am only gonna do that on the front side and I'll tell you why later. Start one or two inches from where the start point on your elastic is marked. And you're gonna make a mark there and you're gonna label it pocket start. Then measure six inches down and label it pocket end. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scooch my pattern over just a little bit and I'm gonna mark on the fabric two lines, pocket start and pocket end. And then to make sure that I get the exact same measurements on the other one, I'm gonna scoot it over a little farther. I'm gonna fold the fabric over so now the bottom layer is showing and I'm gonna mark now I have pocket start and stop labeled on both of my pieces. I'm also gonna label both of these pieces with an F. Now let's set our two front pieces aside. Now we're gonna lay our fabric out again, right sides together. Now we're gonna take a drink. Now I'm going to put my other pattern piece on the fabric and pin it in place. Now that it's pinned in place, let's go ahead and cut it out. Now I'm not gonna mark the pockets on this one, but I am gonna mark each one with a B. Now before we start putting them together, let's cut our pockets. I'm gonna keep my fabric folded in half and I'm just gonna cut two instead of cutting four individually. I'm gonna cut each pocket to about six and a half inches by 10 and a half inches. This way we'll end up with a pocket that is roughly six inches by 10 inches. Now I have my four pocket rectangles, so it's time to start putting them together. So I've got my front, my back, and my pockets. I'm gonna make little sets with one front piece, one back piece, and two pockets. Now you can't just put any old front piece with any old back piece. You have to make sure that the straight side lines up with the straight side, and then the inseam lines up with the inseam. So I'm gonna take one of my back pieces, and I'm gonna put it right sides together with my front piece. And yep, it looks like these two match, so this is going to be one set with a set of pockets. So this will be the other set with a set of pockets. Take one of your sets and set it aside. I've already marked on my front piece where the start and the stop for the pocket is. So what I'm going to do is fold this back and we're going to be putting the pocket right sides together, lining up the edge with the front piece. So I'm gonna remove the back piece actually. So I can show you how it looks. So it's gonna look like this. The pocket is right sides with the front piece. I'm gonna line up the top with where I've marked the start point of my pocket. Now don't worry about the stop point of your pocket because it's gonna be somewhere about here, but we're not gonna worry about that just yet, not until we're sewing. Go ahead and pin this pocket in place. I'm gonna put my back piece on the front piece right sides down. Line up the waistband part and then line up this straight edge. If you'll notice, my pants do not match. They are not supposed to match. We will deal with that later, so don't worry about that. I'm going to mark on my back piece where the pocket starts. Now the fabric on the back of the pants is bigger and we're gonna deal with that here in just a second, but part of what we have to do in dealing with that is we have to put the pocket on the back side a half inch lower than the pocket on the front side. So go ahead and mark a half inch down from that original mark. So now this second mark is where I'm going to put my pocket. We're gonna take this to our sewing machine right now and we're gonna attach the pockets. You're going to sew from the start of the pocket down to the bottom and you're going to use a half inch seam allowance. Make sure that you forward and back stitch at the front and the back. So let's go do that. I'm gonna take my 
pocket. And I'm going to fold it out and then I'm going to press the seam flat. Now this next part is optional. If you would like for a little bit of extra reinforcement of the pocket area, sew again from here to here, top of pocket to bottom, using a quarter inch seam allowance this time. Be aware that you will be able to see the thread. So if you want it to not show up at all, make sure you use a matching thread color to this. Now that I have my second seam here on my pocket, I'm gonna place the back face up and I'm gonna place the front face down. Line up the waistband at the top and then put a couple of pins in it. You might notice on the bottom that your that one of your legs is probably one to two inches longer than the other leg. And that is totally normal, so don't worry about it. What we're gonna do now is something that I think is called easing the fabric. Even though it'll do weird stuff to this, we are going to match up these hems, and then we're gonna put a couple of pins in it. Now underneath my front piece, my back piece is kind of wrinkly and that's because there's extra fabric there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna allow the feed dogs on our machine to pick up that extra fabric for us. So I've got a pin in here at the end and this bottom fabric is my back fabric, the one where I have a little bit extra. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a little bit extra back fabric for the front fabric. When the machine, and I will actually help it, pull and sew it tight, it pulls that together. I've experienced where it may sometimes wrinkle a little bit depending on if you, if you put in this much fabric, yeah, it can't pull that tight. So it is going to fold and it's gonna wrinkle. But if you can get the easing just right, which can sometimes take a little practice, then the machine will actually pick it up for you so that as you pull it tight and sew it, it will bring it all together. Even if you do end up with just a little bit of a wrinkle, that's happened to me on a couple pairs of pajama pants, there are pajama pants and they're baggy and I can't even tell. So don't worry about it too much if you can't get this right on the first try. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to kind of push it so that there's more back fabric and then I'm going to pin it. Then I'm gonna go a couple of inches down and I'm gonna do the same thing. Push it so that there's more back fabric. And then pin it. Use more pins rather than less here. You can see that I've got some extra wrinkles here on my back, but when that gets pulled tight, when I'm sewing, it'll look just fine. So go ahead and try to ease the rest of your fabric. When I get to my pocket, I'm gonna stop pinning. As my back fabric gets pushed up, it's going to make these a little bit more even, hopefully. And even if it doesn't, it's okay. We're only losing a half inch on each side. We are going to go sew this, making sure that the back of our pants is face down. So this here is my front and this is my back. We want the back on the bottom. Make sure that the feed dogs on your machine are up. I'm gonna take a drink to prepare myself for this part. This is probably the trickiest part of the whole sewing project. So if you don't get it right the first time, super don't worry about it. It took me a couple of seams of doing this on pajama pants before I really kind of got the hang of it. But I'll show you my tips and tricks. So this may be not what you're supposed to do, but I am going to start on the bottom hem with the back side facing down, but because I'm gonna do that, it means that my, um, my pants are kind of going the wrong way, but I'm doing this because I want the fabric to move in order to get to my pocket so that my pocket lines up as best as it possibly can. So I'm going to be using a half inch seam allowance. Because I'm doing it the wrong way, I can't use this half inch seam allowance mark here, but my sewing machine has marks here, so I'm actually going to use the line that corresponds with a half inch on this side. So I will be lining it up here. Make sure you forward and back stitch at the beginning.
and then let's sew a little bit in and I'll show you what I do. When I get to a pin, I put my needle down so that it doesn't go anywhere. I take my pin out and then I take the fabric and I push it up so that this part right here at the next pin, I'm gonna put my fingers, is flat. But see how the fabric here is a little bit wrinkled? So what I do is I pull backwards and I pull forwards. You wanna make sure that you're pulling the uh, same amount both directions, because if you pull one way or the other, you'll be pulling your fabric and your stitches will get all messed up. So pulling forward, pulling backward, and then I'm gonna sew. And then when I get about to my fingers, I'm gonna put my needle down again. I'm gonna remove this pin. I'm gonna go a couple inches down. I'm gonna flatten out the fabric here with my fingers and scooch it up. Then I'm going to pull back and forward. Getting to my fingers again, so I'm gonna put my needle down. Straighten out the fabric, put my fingers here. My fingers I'm pushing into my machine to keep it taut as I sew. approaching the pocket. Mine didn't actually move all of all that much, which is okay. I just wanted to make sure that I put them different because if I didn't, then I know they would move like two inches. <laughs> so I'm going to sew until I hit this outer seam I already made for my pocket. So now that I'm there, remember this stop point that we made? We are going to sew along the seam line. Try to be on the seam line if you can be on the seam line until you get to that stop point. As I get there, I'm gonna put my needle down, lift my presser foot, and I'm gonna turn my fabric back the other way and then sew back down the seam line. Now, once we get to the start of the pocket here, probably about a quarter inch up from the pocket, I'm gonna put my needle down, lift my presser foot, and turn so that I'm now gonna be sewing straight along the pocket. I'm gonna stop probably half inch, quarter inch from the end. Put my needle down, lift my presser foot, and then keep going along the long end of the pocket. When you're sewing here, there's two lines. Remember, if you did the reinforcing seam, I'm gonna sew past the reinforcing seam to the outer seam. I'm gonna get as close as I can, put my needle down. And then I'm gonna sew the rest of the way to the edge of my pants. Don't forget that we still need to do a little bit of easing here. So we're gonna make sure that this is lined up Pull this taut and sew the rest of the way. Let's take a drink to celebrate the first part of our pants being done. Now here's the thing about flannel. It likes to fray. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim up all of my seams with pinking shears. If you have a serger machine, you can use your serge, serger to serge the edge of these. <laughs> serger to serge the edge, wow. If you don't want to, you don't have to. You could also use an overlock stitch on your machine to do that. The point is just trying to make sure that it doesn't fray too much as you wash it and wear it. It's gonna be a big help to you later if you go ahead and press that seam open right now. Now it's pressed open. Let's fold it back in half, right sides together. Okay, you're probably gonna need to do a little bit more easing on the inseam. So we're going to make sure that this hem is lined up and we're gonna pin it. And then I'm going to make sure that the points of the crotch up top are lined up and then I'm gonna pin it. And then do the same thing to this inseam as you did here. We're only sewing from the hem up to the point of the crotch 
that's it. Do not sew the upper U part. Don't do that yet. Okay, so let's go ahead and ease the fabric and pin it together. Let's take this back to our sewing machine. All right, I've got one of the legs done. Now it's time to do the other one. I have both my legs. Let's turn just one of them inside out. Doesn't matter which one. Now you're gonna take the one that's right side out and you're gonna place it inside the one that is inside out. We wanna make sure that our seams are lined up. So I'm gonna fold it like this to make sure that the seams are all lined up. And then I'm just gonna place it inside. It can be a little bit of a pain I'm about to get them lined up, but make sure that you get these middle seams lined up. So we're gonna line up these two middle seams in the crotch, and we're gonna pin it. I'm gonna line up the outer edge here. I'm gonna pin it. Okay, now that it's sewn together, we are going to sew the U. So you're gonna start from one end, and you're gonna sew down and across. If you want, you can back stitch and then sew across again to give it a little bit of extra durability right here where these seams meet. And you're gonna sew up to the top. This is all using a half inch seam allowance. So if you look at my pair, this is my front side and this is my back. You can see how my back is longer than the front. And that is what you want, that is by design. <laughs> For this next part, you're gonna need your iron, your elastic, and your two safety pins. To make the casing for the elastic, you're gonna fold down your fabric by about a half inch and then you're gonna press it. When you get to these corners, it's gonna get a little bit more tricky. What I like to do is fold it down and then turn it so that it's flat and then press it. It'll mostly keep its shape. I'm gonna flip it to the other side and I'm gonna do the same thing where I'm gonna fold down about a half inch and press. Okay, now I'm using three quarter inch elastic. So I'm going to fold my waistband down one inch, maybe a little more than an inch. This is probably like an inch and a quarter or something. If you are using one inch elastic, fold it down like an inch and a quarter, inch and a half. You want it to be just a tad bigger than the elastic that you're using. So I'm gonna fold it down and then I'm gonna press it. Now this is my backside. And on the back side, that's where I'm gonna insert the elastic and have the opening with the extra sewing. And that way, because it'll have like an extra seam, that's how I'll know it's the back. I don't wanna sew over about a two to three inch gap because that's where I'm gonna feed the elastic through. So on either side of the back seam, I'm going to put a pin going the opposite direction that the rest of my pins go in. That way I won't sew over that part. Now I'm gonna take this to my machine and I'm going to sew along this edge right here, the one that's closest to the wrong side of the fabric, the folded part. I am going to sew with probably an eighth inch to a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm gonna start on one place on the back, I'm gonna sew all the way around, and then I'm gonna stop forward and back stitching at the end here for this opening. this pin I left here. So I'm gonna make sure that I back stitch, forward stitch. All right, let's finish it up. Now we are going to add in the elastic. To know how much to cut, take a measurement of your waist or whoever's waist you're, using, you're doing this for, and then subtract two inches. That's the 
traditional amount of elastic you need, I always find that I need to subtract like four to six inches in order to make sure that it's actually gonna stay up on my waist. So I would subtract two inches, start there, put it around the waist of the person that you're going to be doing, and then tighten it and mark where it is that they are comfortable with it cut off the rest and make sure that you leave a little bit because we're gonna be overlapping the ends by about an inch. So make sure that whatever they want, make sure that you overlap the ends by an inch so that you have enough to sew it. Take one end of your elastic, put a safety pin through it, and then I'm going to pin it to the middle of my pants, right at the middle of the opening. I'm gonna take my other safety pin and put it through the other side. and then I'm going to feed it through all the way around. You wanna make sure that as you're feeding it through, you're not twisting the elastic. Okay, once you've got that elastic pulled through, make sure that it's the right size for whoever that you're making it for. So I just need to adjust mine and chop it off. Don't lose hold of this end. Don't lose hold of the other end either, otherwise you're gonna to have to totally redo this. So you're gonna overlap your elastic, and then we're gonna take it to our machine and we're gonna sew back and forth, or you can sew a little rectangle pattern, and you're gonna use a zigzag stitch. After you've sewed the pieces of elastic together, now we need to close this opening. So take this back to your sewing machine using a straight stitch so from one point that you stopped to the other point that you stopped, forward and back stitching at the end. Since we're so close to the end now, we should probably take a drink. Cheers to you. This is the last thing we need to do, you guys. And then you have pajama pants with pockets. Aren't you so excited? We just need to finish off these hems. Now we added an inch at the bottom. We made our pattern so that we could fold it under a half inch and fold it under a half inch again. Depending on the height of the person you are making these for, you may want to fold it under less or you may want to fold it under more. Because I like pants long, I'm going to fold it under a half inch just once. When I fold it under a half inch, I'm going to pin it in place. I'm going to make sure that it's even on both sides. So I'm going to take this to my machine and I am going to sew using a quarter inch seam allowance and I'm going to sew all the way around doing that on both legs. And once you've done that, you have finished your pajama pants. Check it out, pants with pockets. I hope that you enjoyed this pajama pant with pockets tutorial. If you did, I would appreciate it if you would like and subscribe and stick around so that you can drink along and sew along with me on my next video. Thanks for watching.